to have been a part of March for Elephants Committee for the past two years. Every member has worked fiercely on behalf of our beloved elephants and rhinos. Hello, I'm Liam Maitland coming to you from Oakland Zoo. When it comes to elephants, Oakland Zoo is known to be outspoken, taking a stand for the largest land mammal on earth and spreading the word about a species in peril. If the ivory crisis continues at the current rate, elephants will be extinct within the next 10 years or so. In October of 2014, staff and volunteers from the zoo joined the Global March for Elephants in San Francisco. On this day, more than 140 cities and thousands of people participated worldwide. The elephants are killed for their tusks. The tusk is a modified tooth. And so like a tooth, it has a root cavity that has nerves. The elephant's faces are getting hacked off because that's the only way you can get to all of the ivory. We've gone from 1.3 million African elephants in 1979 down to about 600,000 in 1989. And from there, the populations now are sitting at around 450,000. And that's all mainly due to the ivory trade. But this march is only one avenue of many that Oakland Zoo is taking to rally support for an animal cared for deeply. This is my family. These are my kids. I don't have any kids of my own. I've always loved these guys ever since I first started working with them. It's hard to separate from them. It's hard to think about doing anything else. It's a family affair when it comes to managing the elephant program. Jeff Kinsley is married to Gina, the lead elephant keeper. His sister is Colleen, the zoo's director of animal care, conservation, and research. Right now we have three females, uh, Donna here, and Lisa and Madunda, and then we also have our male, Osh. Um, so we have four elephants. Foot care is a priority during the morning routine. The elephants each receive pedicures, making sure the feet are clear of rocks, cuts, or abscesses. Every single day we do a daily foot inspection where we hose, scrub, and inspect that foot. What we're looking for are foreign objects, so they can get rocks and sticks stuck in that bottom of that pad. It's like a thick callus. The 9,000 plus pound animals are fed 10 times a day through spreads. The 10 times includes from about 7 a.m. till about 11 p.m. at night. Zookeepers walk the perimeter of the exhibit 10 times each day, spreading out the food for the animals to find. The goal is to keep elephants moving and active, mimicking behavior in the wild. So sometimes there's little dabs of peanut butter, sometimes they get um, grass hay spread out throughout the six acres, sometimes they get produce and browse, and so we change it up for them to keep them busy and active. Two years ago, Oakland Zoo joined a coalition called 96 Elephants, a campaign started by the Wildlife Conservation Society. Currently, more than 170 organizations worldwide are actively participating in the campaign. The reason they call it 96 elephants is because the research that was found particularly in East Africa showed that 96 elephants on average were being killed every day as part of this um, incredible demand for ivory. We need to do three things. One is uh, stop the killing of the elephants, stop the trafficking in the ivory, and stop the demand. China is the biggest importer of ivory in the world, with the United States ranked number two. And one of the most popular places to buy or sell ivory trinkets, right here in the Bay Area, San Francisco. You can walk on the streets in San Francisco, like walking on the streets of New York City, and you can find ivory for sale. Selling new ivory is illegal in our state, but a loophole in the California law states that any ivory that was imported before 1976 is legal. And because illegal ivory sales are hard to enforce, they go unregulated, essentially making the demand for ivory greater on the black market. We prefer not talking about the value of ivory because we don't even want to give it uh, a dollar number. The fact is that uh, according to many sources, it's 
as valuable as heroin, it's as valuable as cocaine. But you know what, at the end of the day, that is not the only thing that we're thinking about. At the end of the day, every time you see a piece of ivory, it's a dead elephant. And that's what we need to be thinking about. In February of 2015, Dr. Parrott, president and CEO of Oakland Zoo, and Gina Kinsley, lead keeper, went to Sacramento to tell lawmakers what the ivory crisis is doing to elephants. With the help of the 96 Elephants Coalition Partners, an ivory ban bill is being heard by California legislature called AB 96. If the bill passes, all ivory will become illegal in the state, which is a huge victory for elephants. If a state ban is put in place, it gives the prosecutors another opportunity to go against these organizations and these individuals. So if the federal government chooses not to go after a criminal, the state can. Do I want to be the generation that sees the extinction of this incredible animal? Do I want to have to look at my child and say it was my fault, it was our fault? And I feel that I have a greater responsibility working for a conservation organization. Uh, we have the responsibility to lead, and if we don't lead, then shame on us. Besides supporting a statewide ivory ban, Oakland Zoo was behind a local push to ban the bullhook from the city of Oakland. So this is a bull hook, and it's a tool that is used to control and discipline elephants. Even if it's not actively used, um, it's still a psychological barrier. A bull hook resembles a fire poke. It's used to inflict pain on elephants, allowing trainers to show dominance over these massive animals. It is a practice Oakland Zoo, as an organization, moved away from more than two decades ago. We had a very serious incident with an elephant in January of 91, where we had a keeper that had worked with the elephants for a long time was killed by our male elephant. That tragic accident triggered change, and an entirely new approach to managing elephants was instituted. We care for the elephants here in the Oakland Zoo in a system called Protected Contact, and it was developed over 20 years ago now, and it's a system that's used by most zoos, but the Oakland Zoo was the first zoo in the United States to use this system with all of their elephants. We are purely in a protected contact management style. So in protected contact, we use what's called a target pole, and it's generally any kind of a stick or some sort of a pole um, with some sort of padded soft end. Ours is just a kind of tissue paper wrapped in duct tape. It allows us to interact with the elephants, provide them with all of the husbandry and medical care that they need, but our interactions are through a barrier and it's completely voluntary on the elephant's part. With these devices, we can keep a safe distance um, and be able to still work the elephants the way that we need to. The elephant, for some reason, is frustrated or angry or spooked the keeper is not in danger, but it's also better for the elephant because there's no dominance, there's no physical discipline. The system is based entirely upon trust and cooperation and the elephant wanting to participate. Being safe and the elephants being treated like the way that they should be treated and left alone to be able to more or less live a life like an elephant should live um, is kind of the Oakland way. In November of 2014, the zoo, along with the East Bay SPCA and Humanity Through Education, hosted a press conference urging members of the city council to ban bullhooks in the city of Oakland. The ban was sponsored by council members Gaio and Carb. During the press conference, video of circus elephants being abused with bullhooks was shown to demonstrate why the ban should be supported. Bull hooks are standard use for circuses and elephants in entertainment. So if you see an elephant that's in a movie or in a commercial or an elephant that's giving rides at a fair, those animals are controlled by dominance and physical discipline. Oakland City Council passed the bullhook ban in December of 2014. Oakland followed Los Angeles to become the second major city in California to ban bullhooks. It was very important that there be a ban in Oakland because the circus regularly comes to Oakland. In March of 2015, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus announced they will be phasing out elephants. By 2018, elephants will no longer perform under the big top. A stunning announcement and a victory for elephants. Coming up. Once they're gone here, you know, then they're not gonna be here anymore.
we go behind the scenes at Oakland Zoo's Biodiversity Center to find out how zookeepers are helping to save a frog species native to California and why these quarantine tadpoles play a key role in the process. Frogs around the world are disappearing. One of the big reasons frogs are in crisis around the world right now is due to chytrid fungus, which is spreading worldwide and is just decimating frog populations everywhere. In the late 1990s, the fungus arrived in the Sierra Nevadas and has caused lots of problems for those populations. But the amphibian crisis is being combated right here in the Bay Area. I'm going to take you behind the scenes at Oakland Zoo and show you how zookeepers here are raising a certain kind of tadpole into a healthy frog. Frogs and other amphibians are in crisis right now, and I think zoos have a unique role in doing something about it. At the Oakland Zoo, we're working with the mountain yellow-legged frog and giving it all of our resources, staff, and experience to help. We have three subpopulations of Sierra Nevada yellow-legged frogs here on site. Some of them represent populations that no longer exist in the wild. And the Sierra Nevada yellow-legged frogs are one of the most endangered species in America and the yellow-legged frogs actually used to be very common a hundred years ago. Supposedly if you were walking around lakes in the high Sierra Nevadas, you'd have to watch out where you were walking because there were so many of these frogs jumping around. These rare frogs, which are nearly extinct, are now taking up residence inside the Biodiversity Center at Oakland Zoo. Ninety-five percent of their range is found within the state of California and they're disappearing at an alarming rate. Zookeepers suit up inside the building and enter a quarantine lab where the amphibians live to ensure that none of the animals are exposed to anything harmful. Only a certain handful of people here on zoo site are qualified to take care of these frogs. The state is very strict and has a lot of oversight on who's taking care of these valuable animals. After nearly a year of preparing for tadpoles and undergoing a lengthy permit process, the highly endangered tadpoles were collected from the wild by a permitted biologist. The precious cargo was then transported to Oakland Zoo where they tested positive for chytrid fungus. We're treating them for that fungus, which is actually fairly easily to treat. We're gonna be raising them to a certain adult size. Then we're gonna be treating them for resistance against the chytrid fungus before they go back. And besides fighting off the fungus, these little guys don't grow as fast as many other frog species. They're gonna spend two to three years as a tadpole. They're gonna spend about four to five years as a juvenile before they mature into an adult. So they can live anywhere from 15 to 20 years. You might be wondering, why all this effort to save a frog? These little fellows serve an important purpose in our environment. Scientists call them bioindicators. And when frogs start dying, that means something is wrong in the environment. There are food for birds, fish, snakes. Frogs and other amphibians are a huge indicator that something is wrong with the planet right now. And they also help scientists unlock key research for curing diseases. The public should care about the frog crisis because frogs have played an important role in discoveries of new medicine for humans from antibiotics to anti-cancer drugs. About 10% of the Nobel Prizes in Physiology and Medicine have been awarded to researchers whose work depended on amphibians. Oakland Zoo is playing a critical role in saving the Sierra Nevada yellow-legged frog. However, amphibians across the planet need help, and that's why zoos and conservation organizations like Save the Frogs are getting involved to educate the public and spread the word about the frog crisis. A lot of those frogs that are being sold in pet stores are wild caught. A lot of them are from faraway places. One of the theories behind the spread of chytrid fungus around the world is the pet trade. So if you are releasing your frog out into the environment and it's chytrid positive, you could be setting something in action that you don't even know the consequences to. They're some of the most ancient life forms here, and boy, it would be really sad to see them disappear. Besides the yellow-legged frog program, Oakland Zoo is active in the Head Start program for the Western Pond Turtle and the Puerto Rican Crested Toad. Still to come, did you know Oakland Zoo is the only facility in Northern California that can treat sick condors? Find out how many California condors were treated for lead poisoning in the last year at Oakland Zoo and how these webcams are helping biologists reach sick birds faster. When a condor flies over, it casts a huge shadow. Usually the shadow hits you and makes you look up and then immediately you think it's a small plane flying over. This year we expect to have 150 condors in the wild here in California which is remarkable since we only had 22 in 1982. These birds are critically endangered 
And every time I handle one, I think in the back of my mind, okay, there's only 200 of these in the world, so better do it right. Oakland Zoo joined the California Condor Recovery Program in 2012. It's a program led by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to help the endangered California condor. They're feeding on the remains of dead animals. And unfortunately, those carcasses that were shot with a lead bullet contain either fragments or even a whole slug. Once lead is ingested, it attacks the digestive system, causing paralysis of the digestive system and eventually starvation and death. They're sick, they're compromised, they feel crummy, they're already stressed. Oakland Zoo built the Steve and Jackie Kane Condor Recovery Center, a holding facility specifically designed to treat the massive sized birds. For us, being in Big Sur, we formerly would have to take lead sick birds all the way to Los Angeles Zoo, which is a six hour drive one way. So when Oakland Zoo offered to come on board and help in that capacity, we welcomed it. In 2014, Oakland Zoo's Condor Care Team was ready to treat its first patient inflicted with lead poisoning. 444 was the first bird we treated here. 444 is a special bird to me and the crew. She was our first wild-fledged condor in Big Sur back in 2007. She is the symbol of the success of our project. 444, also known as Ventana, was released into the wild in late May. On August 15th, 2014, a biologist using one of the FedEx condor cams noticed something was wrong. Melissa on our crew was watching and she gave me a call and she had a panicked voice. Mentana wasn't looking normal. It was so severe that we did transport her to LA Zoo. They're set up to deal with severe cases of lead and they did everything in their power to save her. Lead poisoning doesn't differentiate. It is a heavy duty toxin and it took her life. In 2013, Governor Jerry Brown signed AB 711, a bill that will make California the first state in the nation to ban lead bullets. The new law is set to go into effect in 2019. Until lead is out of the environment, biologists and veterinarians will keep up the fight to save these awesome birds from extinction. The cameras inside the Stephen Jackie Kane Condor Recovery Center have just been an invaluable tool for us here at the zoo. We use the FedEx Condor cams every day. They're so instrumental in our day-to-day -day management of the flock. We keep track of the health of the birds. The Condor cams have also helped biologists make new discoveries. I was drinking coffee watching the camera and I noticed a bird on there and it didn't look familiar. I quickly realized we had a wild-fledged bird that had just arrived to our site from a wild pair, a pair that we knew were nesting, but they were in such a remote spot that we weren't able to watch them closely. And we had a feeling they were still going, and this was proof in the pudding. Through a naming contest, the new condor was named Mystery. A fitting name, don't you think? And speaking of new things, UC Santa Cruz has introduced a new internship program where students can earn credit for monitoring the condor cams. Still ahead, Oakland Zoo is getting ready for grizzly bears, mountain lions, and a gondola. When we come back, you'll see an in-depth look at the zoo's new expansion project, the California Trail. It's really going to allow us to complete our master plan. We have a tropical rainforest, we have an African savanna, we have a children's zoo, and so this will be the fourth piece that focuses on California wildlife and our own natural heritage. I'm standing in the hills of Nolan Park, where Oakland Zoo is breaking ground on an exciting new project. The California Trail is a 56-acre expansion of the zoo inside a 490-acre park. The beginning of the California Trail as an idea actually started in the early 1980s. It was related to the theme of the Oakland Museum. So because the Oakland Museum has a California focus, we wanted to do a California focus that complemented their work up here at Oakland Zoo. The new extension will feel more like a wild animal park with large exhibits. One great aspect of the California Trail is that the education program that's associated with it will tie in directly with the state curriculum. And all fourth graders throughout the state of California must study about California's natural history they'll be able to actually come up to the zoo and see it. The center of the trail will be the grizzly bear, the iconic bear on the state flag no longer here in California. In addition, we will have the mountain lion, the black bear, the California condor, the bald eagle, the American bison, the jaguar. 
and the gray wolf. The grizzly bear exhibit will be one of the largest grizzly bear exhibits in the United States. And it really is a good example of what we try to do here at the zoo. And that is to give the animals plenty of space. I'm standing at the future home and launching point of a gondola that will take guests all the way up to the California Trail. Soaring from the lower part of the zoo with views across the bay, looking at five bridges in six counties, coming up and over to see the American bison and a potential glimpse of the grizzly bear as visitors are arriving. The ride to the California Trail will be a one-of-a-kind experience in the Bay Area. It will depart from the California Trail Plaza and take guests on an awesome adventure that includes stunning panoramic views of Oakland, Nolan Park, and the entire San Francisco Bay Area. As visitors look to the east, passing over the wolf and the jaguar exhibit, they're gonna look at rolling hills, looking out over Nolan Park and connecting to the East Bay Regional Park District. Guests will disembark at the visitor center and walk along a pathway that immerses them in the enchantment of the California Trail. When we designed the California Trail, we added a, a boardwalk so that the effect would be the general public walks through the habitats themselves. Animal exhibits were carefully researched and designed to provide state-of-the-art enclosures for housing animals like this, highly endangered bird with a nine and a half foot wingspan. The California Condor Aviary will be the largest condor exhibit in the country. The creatures featured in the California Trail will come from rescue situations, arrangements with local conservation partners or accredited zoos. We've always had a great setting, beautiful hills, perfect weather for animals to be outdoors. And now as we've renovated the zoo, they've been able to expand into an area to show California animals who evolved here, and so they're acclimated to their own natural habitats. Plus, parents, there's an attraction that will be especially designed for children where they can let loose and allow their imagination to take flight in a hands-on way. They can also do learning play, interact with the different features that are up there, and hopefully get another view from an educational standpoint. Community groups, scouts, schools, classes, and youth groups can bring outdoor learning to life through the zoo's new campsites. The gondola, the animals, the stories, the activity zone, the camping, the restaurant, and so much more. The California Trail will be a learning experience for Bay Area residents, for school children, and for tourists, making your zoo a destination in Northern California. The California Trail Project provides a number of opportunities for the community, both in terms of expanding our regional economy, providing extended education, and critical conservation programs. This project is really important to me personally because it really is the essence of what I think we should be doing at zoos, in parks, and with our community. The Oakland Zoo and this California project exists because of the community, because of donors, because of supporters. And in turn, this project will give back to millions of visitors for decades to come. For more information on the California Trail Project, go to oaklandzoo.org and click on the California Trail tab. There you can also find out how to donate or be a part of the California Trail experience coming soon to Oakland Zoo.